We have more breaking news at this hour. A man has died after being bitten by a copperhead snake. It, he's been identified as Oliver Baker. Oliver Chum Baker was a loving father, brother, friend, and compassionate husband. He and his spouse, Marilou, had two great sons from which they were enjoying their company. But little did they know that in just one evening, things would take an unexpected turn, leaving an everlasting mark on their lives. It all unfolded rapidly when Oliver was enjoying a family get-together, when suddenly he felt a sharp, piercing bite. He quickly announced to his family the incident just for him to fall over and lose consciousness. What ultimately cost Oliver his life was a copperhead snake, a widespread species that is not highly venomous but left Oliver vulnerable due to his allergic reaction. This is the unfortunate story of a snake attack on Oliver Baker, a beloved man in his community. Oliver, nicknamed Chum Baker, was a southern soul born on April 4, 1967 in the heart of Birmingham, Alabama. Raised in the warmth of the South, Oliver's roots ran deep in the rich soil of Alabama. Growing up, Oliver hustled through the hallways of the Altamont School, tossing his cap in 1985. High school was where his journey took shape and where his nickname came to be. Nobody knows why and how Oliver got it, but Chum stayed with him since high school and throughout the rest of his life. The hills of Birmingham witnessed the evolution of a man with dreams as vast as the Alabama sky. In 1990, Oliver enrolled at the University of Alabama, with his sights set on getting a degree in sociology and a minor in biology. His academic pursuits reflected his curiosity about life and the living. When he first arrived at the University of Alabama for graduate school, he was just a kid like everyone else. However, he excelled at statistics while most of his peers were stumped by the subject. Oliver kindly helped his friends, support a study group, and explain the work to them. He didn't only help, he taught them with great humor and kindness. His friends managed to get by while he aced the subject. But biology became his true love during those studies. Eager to delve deeper into the mysteries of the natural world, he came to the University of Tennessee for his graduate studies, majoring in it. The early 1990s marked a shift in gears for Oliver. He became the co-host of the renowned Big O Shopping Show, a platform that showcased his charismatic presence and resonated with audiences. There was an era where Oliver's voice echoed through the airwaves, leaving an indelible mark on those who tuned in. Life did not stop for Oliver when the show ended. It simply took a different path. Manor Grocery became a significant chapter, with over a decade etched in his work history. The aisles witnessed his dedication and the shelves held the memories of his hard work. A new era unfolded when he started work at Gale Force Productions. He worked there for over 10 years and contributed his skills, leaving an imprint on the landscape of his professional journey. The rhythm of life beat in tune with Oliver's steady footsteps as he navigated through the ebb and flow of his career. In 2012, the city of Northport became the stage for Oliver's professional encore. From that year on, he toiled under the banner of civic duty. However, Beyond the resume and professional accolades, Oliver was a man who never met a stranger. His infectious warmth drew people like a magnet. Friendships with him were like oak trees, sturdy, enduring, and providing shade in the scorching Alabama sun. His humor was as boundless as was his kindness. A friend in the truest sense, he stood by those he cared for. Another passion of his was music. He listened to everything he deemed good. Whether it was country or the soulful notes of the blues, Oliver's playlist was colorful. Beyond the work of everyday life, he found solace and joy in many hobbies. Fishing, hunting, cooking, and gardening were his favorites. Although he didn't end up working in a biology field, nature echoed in his heart and he loved being outdoors. Oliver also loved sports. Football especially wasn't only a sport for him, it was a passion. His love for the Crimson Tide was a source of joy that connected him to the collective spirit of his beloved self, and he loved grouping with his friends to visit home games. Amid all his passions, he was a great family man, and family stood at the cornerstone of his life. His parents, Dr. and Mrs. Oliver Charles Charlie Baker II, were the roots that grounded him. Siblings, Miriam B. Morris, Mark A. Baker, and Robert E. Reb Baker were great siblings to grow together with. Mary Lou Breener Baker, the love of his life, became his partner every step of the way. 
For nearly 22 years, they went through the highs and lows together. Oliver's sons, Oliver Charles Charlie Baker IV and Walden Redding Baker were loved immensely. Basketball games with Walden and fishing expeditions with Charlie were the moments he cared about the most. It was a warm Saturday night at the family home on Smith Lake. Every family member was excited for this getaway in the nature that they had planned for months ahead. But their plans didn't unfold properly. After arriving and spending time with everyone, Oliver took his Labrador puppy for a stroll on a quiet Friday before the incident. He came around the family patio, and while he was always excited for the spring, fate had a different plan for Oliver. In a sudden and shocking moment, he quickly announced to his family that he had been bitten by a copperhead snake. The words that would set the course for a tragic weekend. The snake's venom had triggered a severe allergic reaction, leading to apoplectic shock and cardiac arrest. Panicked, the family rallied to his side for help. Minutes later, Oliver had lost consciousness, his body succumbing to the venom. The snake still coiled outside the back door, and the terrified puppy remained the only witnesses to the unfolding tragedy. Swift action was taken by a family member who administered CPR until first responders could arrive, but they were some time away. Because of the allergic reaction, the initial attempt to fly him to a hospital was canceled due to his unstable condition. Instead, he was driven to a nearby school where a medical helicopter awaited to directly transport him. It was a race against time as Oliver eventually found his way to the Huntsville Hospital. The fight lasted the whole weekend. Oliver fought bravely, but it wasn't enough. Memorial Day dawned with heartbreaking news for his family and friends. Oliver had succumbed to the venomous bite. In the midst of despair, Oliver's brother, Reb Baker, stepped into the harsh reality. He recounted the chain of events that led to the irreversible loss. He said that everyone was stumped by what had happened and rushed to help him. He didn't blame the hospital workers or anyone. He just admitted that his brother's organs simply couldn't recover. The following day, he made a somber Facebook post that confirmed the loss of their wider group of friends and family. His brother and best friend was lost to a ruthless bite. There are many good mechanisms set for responding to attacks from different animals, especially the most dangerous ones. Science has given us anti-venom that helps if distributed properly and on time. In places where there is danger of such an event, specialists are on the job. But the biggest killers aren't the snakes that are the most venomous, but rather the opposite. The most venomous snake in the world is the inland taipan, but nobody has ever succumbed to its attack due to good preparation for them. Most people die of less venomous snakes and vipe due to hospitals not being prepared. Technology has advanced so much, but there are still no good answers to the allergic reactions of these kinds of attacks, and nobody has an idea on how to deal with them, despite copperhead snakes and similar ones being so widespread. Is anyone here to blame? Or was this just a natural tragedy? If yes, then who? Should the government get involved and find a way to treat these kinds of unfortunate attacks?